back to this fresh week of broadcasting here on the American Family Radio Talk Network. The program is Focal Point. My name is Brian Fisher, your congenial, convivial, and amiable, as always, host. Great to have you in the conversation today. Uh, in the book of Jeremiah, in my uh, personal perusings and musings and meditating on the Word in the mornings right now, uh, Jeremiah is a terrific book for us to study because Jeremiah was a man that God had raised up to speak truth to power, just like Benjamin Carson did to Barack Obama at the National Prayer Breakfast last week. And we've got a couple of sound bites coming up where we discovered that Benjamin Carson is not only a strong believer, he is also a young earth creationist. He believes the same thing about the origin of everything that you and I believe. God created everything in seven days, and he uh, is a firm disbeliever in the morally and scientifically intellectually bankrupt theory of evolution. So we'll play a couple of those sound bites uh, for you as we go. But Jeremiah was raised up to speak truth to power in his own day, and he was speaking words to a nation that was in moral decline, just as our nation is. So Jeremiah was preaching to a nation that was in moral decline, seeking to arrest their descent, to reclaim the nation for its founding values. This is exactly what we are about today. So I think we'll find what Jeremiah says resonating with our own hearts as we seek to recapture this country for the truths, to the truths on which it was founded. Now, here's what Jeremiah says, first of all, in chapter 5. Now, this is actually God's instructions to Jeremiah. There's something very fascinating about what he says here. He says, run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, look and take note, search her squares to see if you can find a man, one who does justice and seeks truth, that I may pardon her. Now, here's the thing I want you to see. God says to Jeremiah, look, I would like to pardon this city. This is a city, he goes on to talk about this city. In fact, let me read some of the stuff he says uh, about this city. They have no sense. They do not know the way of the poor. I will go to the great and will speak to them, for they know the way of the Lord, the justice of their God, but they all alike had broken the yoke. They had burst the bonds, that is the moral restraint, that God had uh, declared to them. Their transgressions are many. Their apostasies are great. And God says, how can I pardon you? Your children have forsaken me, even though I took care of you. God says, when I fed them to the full, they committed adultery. In other words, their economic prosperity became a source of complacency rather than a source of gratitude, and it led them to depart from God and from the path he'd marked out for them. Shall I not punish them for these things, declares the Lord? Shall I not avenge myself on a nation such as this? They have spoken falsely of the Lord. They have said he will do nothing. No disaster will come upon us, nor shall we see sword or famine. So you've got people all over the place saying today, look, this is not a big deal. This kind of financial spending we've got, this is not a big problem. Nothing bad is going to happen. No disaster is going to overtake us. This is, this is chump change. This is a nothing burger. We've got no problem with spending. We've got no problem with debt. These people are just making stuff up out of their own heads. And the people were saying the same thing. In Jeremiah's day, they were speaking falsely that there would be no disaster that would come upon them. And then he says about those who were prophets in that day, responsible to speak the truth of the word of God, says their prophets are wind. In other words, there's, it's just air. There's no substance. There's no content. There's no truth. They're just windbags. They're just gas bags. The word, that is the word of God, is not in them. So those that were expected to be the ones who would speak God's truth to the people, it was just nothing but wind coming out of their mouths because the Word of God was not in them. And we've got that same issue today. So many of our churches, especially the mainline churches, those pulpits are filled by men who claim a prophetic voice in this culture, but the Word of God simply is not in them. And all that's coming out of their mouths is just gas. Uh, therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, to Jeremiah, because you have spoken this word, behold, I am making my words in your mouth a fire, and this people would, and the fire shall consume them. So he says to Jeremiah, look, we've got a lot of dry kindling around here. I'm going to make your word, the word that comes out of your mouth, like a fire starter, because you're the one that's prepared to speak truth to this people, and I'm going to use your words 
to ignite a fire that is going to destroy this nation. I will bring against this nation, a nation from afar, to act in judgment on these people. Uh, he calls them foolish and senseless, people who have eyes but see not, who have ears but hear not. And he says this, This people has a stubborn and rebellious heart. They have turned aside and gone away. They do not say in their hearts, Let us fear the Lord our God who gives the rain in its season, the autumn rain and the spring rain. They know no bounds in deeds of evil. They judge not with justice the cause of the fatherless, and they do not defend the rights of the needy. Shall I not punish them for these things? And he says, an appalling and horrible thing has happened in the land. He says, this is something which is horrible. It makes me recoil. It's an appalling thing to behold. The prophets, that is those who claim to speak for God, those who have a calling and a responsibility to speak for God, they prophesy falsely, and the priests rule at their direction. My people love to have it so, but what will you do when the end comes? So the prophets, those who have a prophetic voice, were telling lies. Those who were pastors, were priests, were kind of following, taking direction for them, misleading the people. He says, look, this is the way the people want it. This is happening because this is the message that they want to hear. They want to have their ears tickled. They, they want to hear what they want to hear, not what they need to hear. And the prophets and priests have been willing to do it. But God says to Jeremiah at the very beginning of this passage, search her squares to see if you can find a man, one who does justice, who seeks truth, that I may pardon her. Now, here's the beauty, and this is where I want us to end before we go to prayer. The beauty of this is he says, look, all I need is one man. Jeremiah, if you can find just one man, one man who does justice and who seeks the truth, that's all I need to find a basis to pardon and forgive this city for its iniquity in this nation. So let's pray today that we will, each of us, be that man. Let's go to prayer. Lord God, we bring our city and nation before you this day. We confess that we have made our faces harder than rock, we have refused to take correction and refused to repent. We have stubborn and rebellious hearts. Our apostasy is great and our transgressions are many. We and our children have forsaken you and committed spiritual adultery, even though you have supplied all our needs and fed us to the full. We do not fear you, even though you are the one who gives us the rain in its season, both the autumn rain and the spring rain. An appalling and horrible thing has happened in our land our prophets are but wind, and the word is not in them. They prophesy lies, and our spiritual leaders rule by their own authority. They speak falsely of you and say that you will do nothing in the face of our rebellion and that you will never bring disaster on us. Our leaders often do not know your way or your requirements. With one accord, they have broken off your yoke and torn off the bonds that held them to you. They dress the wound of our people as if it were not serious. Peace, peace they say, when there is no peace. We confess that to many in our land, your word is indeed an object of scorn rather than reverence, and they take no pleasure in it. Their ears are uncircumcised, and they cannot listen. We confess that wicked men among us and among our political leaders know no bounds in deeds of evil. They do not judge the cause of the fatherless with justice and do not defend the rights of the needy. We know that we merit your punishment for the oppression that is among us. As a people, we are foolish and senseless. We have eyes but do not see and ears but do not hear. We pray that you will raise up among us men like Jeremiah who will declare your truth and be like those who test and refine metals. You say here that you will spare a city and pardon it if there is but one man in it who does justice and seeks the truth. May we each be that person in our cities. Your eyes look for truth. I pray that you will find it in us. In Jesus' name, 